Welcome to Helping Organizations Thrive. Uh, today, I really have the great pleasure and honor to have Hari Buddha Magar on the show. Uh, welcome to you, Hari. Uh, thank you, Julian. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, I'm really pleased that you, you've joined me today. And um, you know, I'm just going to tell the audience a little bit about you if they did not already know about you. Uh, you're from Nepal in South Asia. Uh, you're a mountaineer and adventurer who've broken multiple records in your career. Mm. Uh, and what sets you apart, really, is your incredible resilience and determination in the face of adversity. Uh, and in 2010, uh, you were serving in the British Army's Gurkha Regiment in Afghanistan, and you lost both your legs above the knee to an IED. And um, many people might have been discouraged by such a life-changing event, uh, but you refused to be held back by this physical limitation. And um, recently, you went on to become the first ever double knee Above, above above knee amputee to summit Everest, which is absolutely amazing. Well, so congratulations on that, um, Ari. It's an amazing achievement. Uh, having been to Everest Base Camp myself, which is as far as I got to, I was at the foot of the mountain, uh, and even that is a challenge in itself. And just seeing that the majestic mountain, uh, to say well done to you and congratulations on that. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, it uh, definitely wasn't easy to coming out uh, from um, from uh, my injury. Um, I struggled one and a half, two years of my time. Uh, but yeah, finally, I was able to pull out some ways. I don't know how I did it, but uh, some ways <laughs> I pulled out and um, I wanted to live a life, uh, simply uh, relive a life, um, uh, refine my you know dreams and ambitions um yeah so uh, in in life life doesn't go always as a plan uh, sometimes it takes completely different turn that we um wanted uh, and but whatever happens it happens for a reason as long as we are positive and and um you know work hard then i think yeah i think we, we we, we can live a uh, meaningful life. And my aim is to try to live a meaningful life uh, as much as I can. Absolutely. And I want us to just go back before Everest, because obviously that, that's almost a pinnacle of what you've done. And, and we'll, we will talk about that as well. But I want to go back to 2010 when you were serving uh, in the army, British as Gurkha in the British Army Regiment um, in Afghanistan. And just, I just, Take me through that moment when it all happened, when you, your, I guess, your life changed dramatically. Um, I was with the uh, first battalion, the Royal Gorkha Rifles, um, and uh, uh, we were just deployed uh, to Afghanistan. We were just a couple, couple of weeks, um, and on that, on that day, we were at. Um, uh, Nahari Saraz uh, district, uh, it, in a place called PB2, so patrol base 2. Um, and uh, on that day, I was blown up. Our uh, we had we had a uh, two missions on that day. One was to familiarize the area ourselves so that we know the area. Second one was to um, take a two uh, engineers. Um, uh, uh, to uh, survey the well so they can go back and repair so local people can have a water. Uh, the well was uh, very old and damaged and not working. So uh, our job was to give a security to those engineers. Um, uh, yeah, we were just it was about three, four o'clock in the afternoon. We were just, um, you know, pretty much, uh, you know, kitted and booted, ready everything. Uh, and, it was about um, the three, four o'clock in the afternoon. It's just like a very warm, sunny day. Um, and we are about, uh, we are 20 people uh, working on a single file. Uh, we passed a couple of compounds, some irrigation ditches and poppy fill. When we were working alongside of the poppy fill, suddenly went bang and simply my last sense pretty much in the blink of eye. And uh the dreams that i had um, had to be changed the way i live with my family has to be changed because nothing worked and the way i used to move around changed uh, yeah many things has changed and luckily um my colleagues who 
were absolutely professional and passed me on, passed me on time, called a heli uh, and evacuated on time. So um, I'm grateful to be alive he um, here and hopefully um, whatever I'm doing, hopefully I'm making them proud that they, they saved my life. And when it when it happened, did you realize the the magnitude of what it happened, what it had done to your body at that point, or you were not quite aware at that point? I was completely conscious, so I looked my right leg; it wasn't there any uh, anymore. Uh, my left leg was there, but it was uh, dangling on bone and skin. So I also injured my right arm. You see it? Oh, yeah. uh, so couldn't able to move um, my right arm. Um, it was, uh, yeah, first thing is, are, am I going to survive? And after about five minutes, guys passed me up. They cleared, you know, a secondary device around me. So make sure you secure the area before they call in the heli. And they were saying, heli in 10 minutes, heli inbound in 10 minutes. So, um, yeah, I thought that I'm going to survive. <laughs> then I was worrying about the, uh, about, about the boys because... Uh, you know, in the battlefield, there's no one to protect you. Your family is not gonna go and gonna go there and protect you. Your your friends are far away, uh, and only people protect you are your comrades, your colleagues that uh, you are working with them. So simply in army, we say you watch my back, I watch your back. So this is how, uh, and just uh, help each other. And our aim was to uh, go there six months, uh, do the job and come back everyone safely but you know we couldn't i was a uh, second in command of the um uh 14 people team um and we had a very young uh Britain commander um he was absolutely actually amazing uh and later uh, my platoon commander got also injured in separate incident we lost one guy um and we another got injured so uh, four, uh, you know, four, four out of 14 were down by the six months time. So one, one, is, one, one is killed and uh, three of us got injured. So, yeah, um, I was really worried that, uh, especially, you know, without leader, you know, leaving the boys in the ground, it's just, you know, it's like a, uh, leaving, you know, six by their mom you know mm. but they're gonna go there they have nothing to do but in the in, in the army we have a great command and control system and uh, you know chain of command so um yeah, yeah you know other people can take over our job and you know look after the boys and do the job that we have been mm. told to do yeah and I, and I can't imagine um sort of obviously the explosion but also then looking down and seeing one leg completely gone and then one hanging off that must be incredible the well traumatic and distressing when you go into the hospital because the humans got patched up and when was the realization of what really had happened and and, and, and what were you thinking then of the future then at that point uh, when you realized basically both your legs have been taken out um so first, um, when I got into the, heli, I was completely conscious until the heli, and when they gave me a mask, then I passed away. Uh, and next, I woke up next morning in Kambasan, uh, in Phil Hospital in Afghanistan. Um, uh, and, you know, when I woke up, I could see down and could see uh, my, um, you know, it's, it was from here, the bottom covered by blanket, white blanket. And my ha hand was completely plastered and hanged on side. And I, I got lots of needles on my uh, left arm. And uh, I didn't have a courage to, I, because I, re I remember that um, the incident. So I knew that my right leg was gone, my left leg was there, but is it still there? I didn't have a courage to open and have a look at or ask someone, honestly. And later, surgeon came and said, um, yeah, I um, imputed your left leg as well because it was badly damaged and it would be a life-threatening injury. So yeah, he um, he uh, he explained to me and what happened and what he did um, on my body, you 
no so but I've, and later he told me that um, you got a decent limbs they are not very infected infected so you would able to walk and so i didn't believe that because uh, i knew i grew up in nepal how disabled people were treated and, you know i never seen the people with the uh, two metal legs above the new walking um, with the mechanical legs i never seen them and you know i have seen the small amputation like a one arm amputation or one leg uh, amputation but they never seen that so and, and in nepal is everything is about hiding it you know and also um, you know many people in nepal still think that uh, you know once you disable you can't do anything and so you are burden of the earth and but also um, many people think that you have done something in your previous life so you are having uh, this you know god punished you or whatever it is so so, so this is the thing that and i was i thought that my life is completely gone um, i have to sit in a wheelchair for the rest of my life and i need, need a carer I'm not sure whether my wife is going to stick with me. So there is lots of things was going in my uh, mind um, and how to feed my family, like uh, being a, a Gurkha, a Nepalese, coming from very remote uh, part of the Nepal is, it's not just me, but there are so many people financially depends on me. Like my brothers is still there were in uh, college. Um, we just moved down to Kathmandu. Um, uh, so we haven't settled down. I had a loan take out to build my home in Kathmandu. So yeah, there are lots of uncertainty and we just moved, moved uh, to UK from Brunei uh, where our base was. And I had a very um, uh, small children, uh, you know, you know, to look after. So, 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 um, yeah, um, it's lots of uncertainty. So I didn't know what to do. So I start drinking, and a couple of times I tried to take my life myself. And yeah, you know, la la life was pretty hard for one and a half, two years of my time, and I kind of wasted. Maybe maybe I should trust to um, the surgeon that who actually told me. Maybe trusted a bit more uh, to 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 the doctors and nurses and physiotherapists and uh, occupation therapists, which was is very hard. When you don't believe it, then it mm. becomes really really hard. And finally, I started sports and adventure and. I know I pulled out myself out uh, from that, that uh, all the negative things and misery. And I actually had a um, six weeks treatment at combat stress as well. Um, I was really struggling mentally when I was coming out of the army. Uh, I thought that, you know, I grew up in a very harsh condition in Nepal and you know, um, I have done so, I have been so much things through and I'm the army man and you know, I'm the Gurkha. So, you know, mental things shouldn't, uh, you know, uh, uh, affect me. But, but yeah, uh, you know, sometimes there is a stigma that we don't come out and talk as well. So, mm. yeah. Uh, so you, you had this, this cultural almost, uh, challenge where the mindset that if you're disabled it could be something wrong with you or something in your past or it could be you just life's over and and, and that almost like a cultural sort of limiting belief I guess that was happening there and and obviously that led to you said a couple of years where you were drinking and, and at times you felt sort, sort, sort of um, take your life what was the the moment or the point because the, the amount of people listening here right now who are facing some real adversity, it may be something similar to you or just something else that they're really struggling with and they just can't see a way through this um, because their life has completely been transformed. What was the point in the moments that you thought, oh, there's something, I've got to do something different about it. What was this almost a transformational point? Do you remember that? Yes, I remember very clearly um, that one day, um, uh, you know, um, I felt, terrible especially um, waking up in the morning uh, you know your hands are shaking your 
mind is a bit foggy and you can't remember properly what happened and so many things. So um, I thought if I'm going this way, I'll die soon. If I die, that's fine. End of my story, right? This is one last second. But that my it because because I, as I said that you know I had lots of responsibility. Not just uh, many people does not just depend on me, um, but also there are so many so many things uh, that especially my family will suffer because you know they'll do do in society in our society they won't uh, take on positively you know so so i did not really want it to do that because it's quite horrible honestly um because i have seen that before you know uh, so i didn't want it that i don't know um, i'm gonna leave that was the point that uh, everything's changed i think uh, uh, to change life you don't need much thing i think just one word can change life one phrase can change life one moment uh, can change life um, you know just simply uh, even climbing everest was just in my mind was can i able to climb everest and now because i always was wondering about that so so as long as you put your question mark in your mind and something you want to do positively then it's magical things happens and you do one by another by another so after that you know, I was kind of half suicidal more, so I went to skydiving 15,000 feet and jumped down from aeroplane. And when I landed safely on the ground, and honestly, even you don't have legs, you can do something. <laughs> I had a very little confidence. And when you come about confidence, com confidence doesn't come with, a, you know, my magic wand. It doesn't come with the Abra Kid Abra. Kitching, go and climb the Everest or go and rule the world. It's, it's not like that. You know, it's a very small things that plays very important role in life. Like say, uh, before I couldn't, from floor, I couldn't jump on my wheelchair. Um, mm -hmm. I couldn't brush my, myself. I couldn't go to toilet myself. I couldn't uh, transfer uh, to the car myself. So there is lots of things that um, I couldn't do um, myself. So, you know, doing one thing, that gives you confidence and, and you do another thing, it gives you another confidence. And it's, so after skydiving, my aim was to what can I do physically uh, after losing both legs? So that was my aim and did all the sports and adventures, pretty much anything that I can put hands on. I was completely rubbish in some of some of things. I was decent in some of them. And I simply um, it's about it's not about, I think, um, what you do. I think the most important thing is why you do it. Mm. Yeah, that's important. It, it's interesting you say that, that, that for you, it's this doing things, you know, for those people in that difficult is almost one thing at a time, small things at a time. Um, I do laugh to myself that one of the one of those small things for you was jumping out of an airplane, which some people might see as a big thing. But it, it's, as you say, you talked about, you know, things about, getting yourself ready, cleaning yourself, all that sort of stuff. And I think, you know, it's important to take those those steps and, and to, to move forward uh, day by day rather than always thinking something massive ahead. It's just those small steps we need to take, isn't it? Yeah. When you think negative, you just worried so much, you know. Uh, so I think there are a couple of things when you when, when are negative. One thing is once you're thinking negative, try to distract as soon as possible. So if you're not feeling very good, just go for a walk or, or wow. listen to music or, you know, just, ex you know, do the, this breathing exercise and just, um, just, just mindful, uh, you know, just, just focus on your breathing. And it's like a little things that, uh, which let's say breathing in nature, they don't have nothing to say. They don't judge you, right? <laughs> so, so, so I think focusing on those things is, uh, I think, is really, really important. And that's what I do. And uh, that's what I learned from combat stress for six weeks, seven, ten. Years. So, mm. still, I do suffer sometimes, but you know, you know, I kind of manage that way. Uh, sometimes, um, uh, who, who, when you worry about it, just like say, you know, I give you an example of mine. So I wanted to go to town um, on wheelchair. So how am I going to go? Uh, how am I going to jump in a uh, bus or car? And 
where to park and where to wheel. Can you go to your destinations? And you just worry so much instead of just go and, you know, find out, you know, start tackling those problems. <laughs> yeah, you know, when you have a confidence, you just go and start doing it. If you need help, so you can ask public to, can mm. I help? Can I, can I, help? can I, can you help me please? You know, so you can do that. But if you don't have a confidence, you just order, oh, what is he going to say? Oh, he might mind. He, he might not help me. And you know, those are things that mm-hmm. goes around when you think about negative. So um, I think it's, it's about um, try to be positive. But sometimes even I you know, just go and do it, you know, just to come out that bubble, come out that boundary. This is a, it's all about mental not boundary. So mm-hmm. if you set your mind, your body will follow somehow. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting. Most uh, when people have a, a such a traumatic event, it can go either one or two ways. Really, it can go the way of being almost post-traumatic stress disorder, and it becomes really something that impacts them and it inhibits what they do, or what we call post-traumatic growth, where people find meaning uh, in that adversity and do something great with it. And you mentioned about being more important about not the what, but the why. So what is your why about why you do things, why you take on Everest, why you do these challenges, why you jump out of airplanes and and push the boundaries of what you can do? What's the why behind that now, Murahari? Uh Yeah, especially jumping out the airplane was to, I was half suicidal mode, so half of my body's gone. So if I, another goal, that's fine. <laughs> uh, you know, it's you know, my story. And another one was to, um, I never experienced, so I wanted to take experience for that. Um, and after that, most of the adventure and the sports, they were about finding my limits. Uh, limits um, that what can I able to do but what happened is kind of it kind of magical thing happened after doing all all those sports and adventure that you know if we adopt our life according to the time situation um, uh, then we can able to do anything you know uh, I skied um, standing before uh, uh, and now I ski sitting in one ski with the uh, rigors but I can go same route, um, same uh, speed, uh, maybe, maybe faster, <laughs> uh, and I enjoy this as much as I used to. So what is different? It's just a different way of doing things. Um, about kayak as well. So I kayak lots. I kayak, I'm the, one of the first employees to kayak around Isle of Wight non-stop um i kayaked uh, we, we kayaked uh, retest, uh, with the kayak we retest the route of cocktail heroes in river Geron in france five days um i was part of the team that uh, we kayaked from yukon river to all the way down to uh, near to alaska so 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 uh two weeks 465 miles and yes i needed a little bit of help to take take my kayak and boats to the river banks and uh, need little need a little bit of help but you know once I got in I'm no difference and many of my friends that who who helped me climbing Everest because of because of the, you know they saw me at that time that how determined I, I think I was and uh, I worked hard so 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 um, so so after after doing um, all of this it, it, it was just to find myself what can I able to do but and then after it came that it went certain point that um, pretty much done everything <laughs> and what am I gonna do and that is the where it came that I came to Mount Everest and I grew up uh, looking the mountain every day and also um, uh, um, you know, reading the story of the Everest, it's the tallest peak in the world, and it's in Nepal. It uh, simply is a, uh, it's a symbol and pride of Nepal, uh, and we, we are very proud of that. Um, and Sir Edmund Hillary and Tenjun Norge, uh, who, who submitted first 70 years ago uh, this year. Um, and reading, I was always fascinated by that. I couldn't do it when I was in service. Um, uh, because I was more focused on the training operation and my career. 
Uh, and when I was skiing in um, Austria, Germany, uh, Colorado, and, and Whistler in Canada, and I was thought of uh, looking those mountains, how am I going to climb it? That was, it was in my mind. And later, I was able to meet, um, I was, it, it, it was a great pleasure for me to actually, and lucky, privileged to meet actually Krishna Thapa, who, is my, who was the um, former um, chief mountain instructor and mountain troop leader um, um, in SAS since he served 18 years and I was able to meet him. And we uh, started climbing and um, then after that, yeah, I committed, but it took a very long time, honestly, it took it to go. Yeah, more than five years to make this happen. I wanted to do on before four, I'm 40, I'm 43 now, it passed three years more. Uh, but yeah, hey, yeah. sometimes nothing goes as a plan. So as long as we don't give up, I think. Yeah, and, I, and I, I love how you reframe things in life. And you have a quote that life is all about adaption and nothing is impossible. And that's like, an amazing reframe of, of how you go about things the fact that you you know looked at everest uh and obviously you, you've built up to it with all the various other things stuff you've done it's not just jumped to everest you've done other stuff and that's that's where you build the confidence as you talked about doing small steps but thinking actually nothing is impossible so you just blow your your boundaries i just got to adapt and that's what you do and i, and I think that's a great lesson for us all really that when we're facing our challenges uh, in our lives that yes it may be difficult but actually nothing really is impossible we just got to figure out the adaption and the the way of doing it to overcome it and I, I remember hearing somebody saying to me once um, everything is figure outable everything is figure outable you just got to find that way and be creative be innovative and uh, get the support of others to do that and that's what what you've done um, so let's take us to to, to Everest. Um, having myself stood at the, the base of Everest, I've gone to base camp. I've not climbed it. Uh, I'd love to have climbed it, um, but my, my my fear of heights has got worse as I got older. Um, so I don't think I would I'd get across the ice falls to be honest with those ladders um, and and those sheer drops. Um, but it's an amazing place. It's magnificent. It's it's very awe inspiring. There's something very magical about that place. Having been there. Uh, and it is incredible. So when you set out to do it, what were your greatest sort of fears really of that challenge before you sort of went on to the mountain? Yeah, just my my fear was, uh, I think, yeah, there are a lot. <laughs> but one thing was how my family will live without me you know, if something happens on Everest. So that was a huge thing. I put lots of things in place, but you never prepare on the scenarios, I think. Uh, so I, I I talked to my wife and yeah, just just prepare for the worst, you know, and I put many things uh, in place, but yeah, and that was the that was thing. But I think when your dreams, where your reason why becomes bigger, and then you, I think your fear goes away, and mm -hmm. um, you tackle, you can able to tackle any problem in life. I think, and I think our reason why is very important. And this year was a record-breaking number of permits were issued, which is. Which mm -hmm. was, um, 478, I think, permit were issued. And all of them, we had our own reason why to go to the Everest. And, uh, you know, unluckily, um, uh, 17 people um, lost their life on this year, which is the deadliest year. Uh, and many got uh, injured. And just over half of us, we were able to make to the top. So um, I think you, your reason why, if it is that is strong uh, and you take calculated risk, um, then I think, um, yeah, I think nothing is impossible, honestly. And 
I was just thinking this. So my logic <laughs> was this. You know, after all doing sports and adventure, I was just thinking how the human revolutions came and how the things that we thought impossible things we made possible. And because of uh, we couldn't able to you know run fast enough to explore explore around the world. So we start designing the things can go faster, take, can take us faster um, in the land, in the sea, and in the sky. <laughs> so now we can go to the another, another planet. Who made that possible? It's a humans. We challenge ourselves. Anything that we have right now here, using whatever we're doing, it's all uh, came from challenge. And some point, in time, someone challenged themselves. They uh, worked hard, invested their time and money. So we are privileged to uh, utilizing uh, those things. Uh, so if we can fly to the another planet, climbing to the Mount Everest should be possible. This is for my logic. <laughs> uh, and but but there was no legs where. Uh, designed for double above the amputees nobody has done it so yeah there are lots of challenges we designed um, uh, as well and uh, it's not perfect my crampon broke um, on the best cam when i was tightening up climb like that because we're never going to be perfect um, <laughs> if you're going to be just a, so, so 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 i personally have some set up some businesses so, uh, you know, when I was kind of starting it, I was thinking, oh, I'm going to be the perfect, and it started. But, you know, you're never going to be the perfect. So, uh, kind of use the one principle that, yeah, start now and be perfect later. <laughs> so, I use that. Um, and also, this is a principle I use even when, when at one point I was scared. And once I start climbing, oh, it might hold up. You know, so so you know, even if it's broken, it might hold up. You know, you know. So I'm, it's not going to be perfect. I don't have a time to go back to Kathmandu or somewhere else mm -hmm. to fix that. You know, even there's no capability to fix that thing in Kathmandu. So so we just 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 climb that away, uh, and um, then there was other other problems uh, like uh, you know they they banned double amputees and visually impaired uh, in, in the 2017. I supposed to come in 2018, uh, and we had to go to Supreme Court and overturn the rules. We couldn't raise the fund in 2019. That the biggest problem was to um, convince the people that you can able to climb the mountain and get support. That was huge, huge challenge, pretty much bigger than, you know, climbing Mount Everest. And also, uh, also, um, you know, challenging a court in Supreme Court um, was um, was huge challenge. It's not just my right, it's the right of people with uh, disabilities. Uh, and we are about 1.3 billion of us. So, so it's not just my right to climb. And after we were done, there are many, many, many amputees. Um, and disabled people who climbed up Mount Everest. Uh, and yeah, climbing itself, how to do it, that was quite easy, but uh, just simply put one step at a time. I knew that uh, how important that is. And in the British Army, I learned the principle of war, which is momentum. So in momentum, so every steps, uh, every journey starts from one step. So if you run a go and run the marathon, um, then you just put one step at a time, simple. That is the principle I used. And if you lose the momentum, you're gonna lose the war. So if I stay there, I'm gonna first to death. So I need to keep moving. I can't sit for a long period of time. So uh, yeah, lots, uh, lot, lots of things that in the army I learned that uh, we applied, but also I had uh, my experience in leader was a very experienced mountaineer and the military man, special forces operator. So, so uh, we we were very adaptable according to mm -hmm. the time and situation. So we were able to uh, do that. It was really, really tough, um, couple of places.
and even going Kumbu, I suppose, because I'm, 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 uh, um, my gait is very short, so it's like I'm working like a penguin, uh, and it takes so long time for me. It takes about three times more, um, um, uh, which is I have born more energies, uh, which means I'm, I'm more in risk. So yeah, but uh, yeah, if you want to do it, and your your reason why is bigger than you, then I think I think yeah, I think anything can can be possible. We made many many things that we have proven that many many things um, um, we made possible. So uh, this is just for me is to do just one thing and uh, prove it. Uh, another way that yeah, people with no legs, you still you can climb Mount Everest. <laughs> and, and, and it's an amazing um, story, and it, and it seemed like that your challenge started with the Nepalese government convincing them that you can climb. And I can sort of see where they were coming from in the sense of logic. <laughs> if you put logic, if you know, really, I'm saying, and I, but I love how you smash logic with your dream and your bigger dream, and you're all about um, you know creating this disability awareness that anybody's got disability. There's 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 no boundaries, there's no limits. Uh, and I love that. And and obviously you convinced them. So it, it seemed to me that almost mentally you'd convince yourself, but also convince them before you even got onto that mountain, which was was, was obviously the start place. Um, and you, you talked about, you know, logic at times, and then and obviously we have logic and emotion. And how did you deal with those moments on the mountain where, and I appreciate you were doing the, you know, one step at a time, keeping that momentum going. How did you deal with those moments when you were feeling really, I don't know, not very hopeful or not very inspired? And there must be moments when it's like tough, whether you're at certain different camps and it was, I don't know, whether the weather was bad or you just physically found it difficult. Was, was there a couple of moments where you thought, actually, this is really hard. I don't know if I can do this. And what did you do to try and keep yourself going? Uh I, there are lots of things that who kept me going. Um, after all those struggles, many people start supporting. And, uh, you know, um, there, there are like uh, many many things that who actually you know uh, kept me, kept me going. Let's say uh, mm -hmm. like my family. Um, you know, uh, especially when we were running out of oxygen, um, I was thinking, no, I need to go back for my family. You know, my son was very, very um, scared of me to going to the Everest. And my wife was absolutely, she was not trying to show her emotions, but uh, she was absolutely, you, you, you know, scared of, uh, you know, not to be returning. So uh, I just want to go back for my family. You know, that is the time that um, we just keep going. But when we were going to the summit, there's a couple of times uh, that when my half of my team returned back to back and I just took it the four guys to go to the summit. Um, I was just thinking, um, uh, you know, I'll just go slightly higher and think about it. You know, I can't lay down the people that who saved my life, uh, my family that who supported me, and many people around the world that who supported me. Uh, my communities, uh, even that uh, you know, you know, my communities like a uh, disabled community, veterans community, um, you, you know, uh, Nepalese community, and uh, you know, people in the UK that who absolutely supported me, and my friend friends as well. So, uh, you know, I had so much from them, so I can't let them down. I know uh, I was thinking when I when I when I was sitting in you, you know going going to I didn't take much pressure. Uh, what I thought was I will do everything I can to make this happen. But if something goes wrong, um, let's say I couldn't make it and I have tried it, I think people will understand. That. That's what I thought. I had sponsors and so many so many. So um, that's I just yeah just kept it kept it uh, going and. Uh, a um, couple of times, one point I actually told my team that let's go back down. I think I'm just trying complete oxygen because there's my oxygen will run out. So even to climb gentle slope, uh, about 10 meters of slope, slope uh, took about 20 minutes. So mm -hmm. I was completely drained out. So I think 
we need to get to get back down and they changed oxygen and i started getting energy again and we just carried on and at the time i had lots of messages from my school children actually i think i have got some maybe here as well okay so excuse me <laughs> so just uh, so i had to get lots of messages like so so yeah, from school children they, they send me the message like this all the time and Brilliant. uh um yeah there, there is lots of messages that who who they sent me and uh you know i can't just let them down just as they you know many, many children saying that yeah you never give up and my my, my son the son's message is there that um best of luck for uh, mount everest uh dad uh, don't fall don't trip uh, don't sleep please <laughs> 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 so i think uh, some of these things are uh, just uh, kept going i carry up up to the camp for uh, and, and yeah um, I, I was I, I was carrying so many things so yeah i'm the gurkha uh, i went to afghanistan to fight until end of my bread uh, uh, simply i didn't have to fight and survived and my friend did a great job and survived and uh, I think um, I'll do my best to, you know, make them proud. Uh, that's what I was thinking. Uh, but also, I think later on the stage is about, for me, is changing perception on persons with disability, that disability mm. can able to do uh, the things that they want to do. Um, but also, it's a making awareness that not just for disabled people that we can able to do the things, give them confidence, mm. but also to um, aware the, the families and communities and the authorities that who support the disabled people that they shouldn't ban the disabled people you know mm. they should um they uh, they should support us so we can live we are still a human beings we can do great great things that maybe our legs might be our weakness maybe our hands might be weakness maybe eyes might be weakness our ears might be weakness but that doesn't mean that we can't do anything you know, we can do lots, lots of things. So, so that and also uh, more about um, you know giving courage uh, to take a challenge and uh, climb um, the people to um, their own mountain, whatever mountain that they have got. It's it, it can be anything like uh, getting a new job or you know getting a promotion or uh, just uh, tackling a problem or, or whatever that is. Yeah, and it's a great lesson you talked about that that why that that sort of that purpose you know your purpose is to you know create this change the perceptions of, of the disabled people uh, and that's what kept you going when when things were really tough uh, the messages and the the impact you're having on those children families soldiers all that sort of wider community that's around you and i think you know when we are facing those challenges and we do know our, our why our purpose uh, when it is tough is to remind ourselves of that because it is bigger than us because the purpose is bigger than us it's not all this is not all about you i know it's not it's it's far bigger than that the impact you're having and what you're trying to do is bigger than harry uh, buddha magar it's far bigger than that uh, and what you're trying to create here and, that, and that's fantastic and, it, and i say it's a great lesson when you are facing those everest in your life how to to keep going and keep pushing forward and keep that momentum going uh, and have those big dreams of pushing those boundaries um, when you sort of reflect on on, on Everest uh, summit, um, what what have you learned? What what surprised you about you from this whole experience of summiting Everest? I think the um, your physicality. Um, I kind of knew that a little bit. Knew that you know. Um, you your body can cope in 55 degree of the sun you know uh, i've been to minus uh, i think about 28 degrees before so and also i walked uh, the longest um, I, I was um, I, uh, I was uh, walk, walking climbing was 23 hours 20 minutes uh, but it exceeded that <laughs> on Everest, on the summit at uh, Death Zone. <laughs> so, so it, uh, it was, uh, it took a, for me, camp four up and down 25 hours, 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. So, so, and how, um, you know, when your mind is, uh, you know, ready, how 
your body yeah, can able to do the things that was quite surprised for me honestly um uh, i think uh, you know you know as i said earlier uh, you know one thing uh, was about my age um, that you know um 43 and i wanted to do um and uh, at the uh, age of 40 below 40 that's what i was trying to trying to do uh, and you can feel the age as well i you know coming after the 40 and things like that and um, um actually uh, when i was climbing with some other younger climbers um, you know they also doubted my fit fitness and that's you know other things but i think it's about mindset i think if you really want to do it, then I think your body will follow. I think you set your mind, work hard, you be true, honest for yourself and be sensible. And also, yeah, you need to get fit. You need to have your admin sorted. you got a, a best shape as a possible, you know, mentally and, and physically. And those are things. But um, I think if we can set our mind our body will f follow if we can run we'll run if we can't run we'll walk if we can't walk we will um, crawl if we can't uh, crawl uh, we will roll so that's you know momentum the, the principles mm -hmm. that is such a such an important it wouldn't be in the army doctrine <laughs> British <laughs> army doctrine if you know that principle i think um, didn't work so I think it's really, really important that from one step at a time, that's how his life is about. It's a very little things, you know, like I told you about how I gained my confidence, just brushing my teeth, also gaining the confidence. Going to toilet yourself is confident, you know, it's like a, it's yeah. very little things that adds up. And, um, and then I think in life is everything is about confidence. I'm not a very educated man, um, yeah, you know, um, I don't know lots of things, but I find I am I'm curious. I try to find the logics in my own way. <laughs> uh, maybe some of the ways, maybe that completely stupid thing, <laughs> maybe. But uh, yeah, yeah. So I think when you are curious, um, when you have a question mark in your brain, then I think um, you will find how you're going to solve that problem or how you're going to achieve your dream. So I think putting question mark in your mind is, I think, is really, really important. If you say, I can't do it, fully stop. There's nothing going to happen. Exactly. No, it is about my innocence. I love the fact that Everest, for you, also broke, broke your mindset. You broke your boundaries of what you had in your mindset as well, which is it's interesting. You had a, probably, not you had limitations, because you, you have this mindset of, you know, nothing's impossible, but you push that boundary even more but it, it's funny how um you know you do this everest which is challenging whether you're able-bodied or not and you had this you, you said the word sense be sensible as well which i i find how do we uh, how do we reconcile sensibility <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, 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 I think, yeah i think that's one thing that and you know people say that you are mad and you're crazy and maybe a little bit <laughs> but I, I try not to be stupid <laughs> <laughs> So, 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 yeah, you need to be sensible and and and, uh, and and not to be stupid and be responsible. I think that's really, really important. So, so Harry, Harry, what, what's next for you now? What, what's the sort of next big thing that you're doing uh, in, in sort of your sort of the future? Uh, I haven't decided that, and I need to talk to my team. It's, it's not just me doing it, right? So, like, even doing the Everest. Uh, there are so many people who supported me, my friends and family, community, sponsors, and there are so many, so many who, who got involved. Um, and also my team, um, team, the Adjusty Adventure, so we were 26 all together, all Nepalese <laughs> on the mountain. So, um, uh, yeah, this is just not me climbing, but uh, there are so many people who who are unsung heroes that who support me at the back, mm, that my family is in so many you know ways that they support me. So um, I need to talk to <laughs> my team, but I'm thinking I will be keep making um, disability awareness until 
I die. It's a simple like a same principle that, that uh, I went to Afghanistan, that I'll keep doing it until I die. I think it's very, very important, this, uh, these things. We can't hide the disabled people. Uh, we can put under the carpet, you know, any problem, hiding it doesn't solve. Um, you know, we need to uh, bring on the table and discuss um, properly so that only that's the only way that we can able to solve those problems. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you hide more and more, it's going to be create a bigger and bigger problem. So you can't hide us 1.3 billion people, <laughs> about 12 to 15 percent of disabled people. So, so uh, I will keep doing it so that uh, you know um, disabled people live uh, as a normal human life, um, as uh, other people live, uh, because you know um, we, our disability might be our uh, weakness, but we can do other things uh, and things. So I'll keep doing that. And to do that, I'll doing some more adventures, definitely. I think um, um, I was thinking that maybe, yeah, yeah, I think after Everest, maybe I might, I might, I might just give up. And I think, I think I need to keep it, this going so that uh, the more and more disabled people climb so they can climb or do the things that they want to do, whatever things that they want to do, mm. so that they can um, they can multiply that uh, awareness campaign um, as well uh, but also uh, this um, it is quite lots of awareness um, um, around the world and this needs to be um, you know it needs to be uh, uh, we need to turn that into action so 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 that you know the authorities can help and communities can help the, the disabled people and support us uh, so uh, i'll keep doing it i'm not sure exactly what i'm doing possibly possibly seven summits that i'm doing so i have got i've done two summits so i got five more summits to maybe to to do i might do north pole to south pole so i have a, i haven't made a decision but i'm just thinking on that line so uh, I will just a little bit thinking. I want to just uh, spend a little bit of my time with uh, with the families. Um, so I just dropped my children and and came here to speak to you as well. So I try to try try, try to be a responsible dad, not only the <laughs> adventurer. So. Well, 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 thank you for coming on today. I, you know, I, I feel inspired by you. I think you've already you've, you've you've challenged my limitations that I put on my own life and my mindset as well, which is always good. And um, and I say I love your, you know, life is all about adapt adaptation. Nothing is impossible, and I love that sort of mantra. And I love the sort of you know just do things step at a time, and uh, and it's pretty inspiring. And and I hope people will get a lot from this conversation. There's loads of nuggets of how to overcome, how to keep going uh, in terms of resilience. And so I do appreciate your time here today. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much. And thanks so much for having me uh, here as well. And um, hope uh, we, together we'll make a uh, disability awareness, uh, but also um, we inspire people to climb their own mountains. Yeah. And I wish you well with all your endeavors and to keep that that purpose of increasing the disability awareness and breaking the boundaries. So yeah, thank you, Harry. All right, take care.